Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're gonna give you an update on the uh, SAG AFTRA slash WGA strikes. Who el who else is striking? There's oh, like there might be some uh, Broadway like stage hands and stuff. IATSE now. Um, yeah, so a lot of a lot of uh, Hollywood going on strike. And again, want to be clear, we're not anti-union per se, but. I think right now with Hollywood being in the state it's in, I don't think they're going to get what they want. Now the directors did. Well, some, yeah, um, some things I, I think are reasonable. Other things I don't. Some think things are reasonable. I think others are not. I do think they need to figure out compensation for streaming. They I really think, do. That's a big problem. Because people are being taken advantage in that regard because they can hide it so easily. It's not like you can be like, oh, look, my movie did umpteen million dollars so i know approximately what my check is going to be it's going to be like well you've got access to the numbers for how many people are actually viewing my show and i have no idea and i just mm -hmm. have to take your word for it so whatever if i get a check for 50 cents that's you know what am i going to do about it the problem with streaming too is you have a show and you might have different people on different episodes so that divvies up the pot how much more you know what i mean yeah so you're like it's it, you end up with way more people involved so it might end up being that you get you all get like five bucks you know <laughs> yeah. that that's that's what I, I don't understand when they're like we want a whole bunch of writers in the writers room like you do realize that's going to split your check how many different ways you know what and, they're going to probably do is okay fine you get your pay for when you show up and you know that's all you get yeah, uh, we'll see. Um, so they actually have a list of what the demands were and what the uh, the studios came back with. We're going to focus mostly, I think, on uh, Fran Drescher here talking about Disney because we talked about Disney that Bob Iger, oh, my God, is making $78,000 a day. Now, there are Hollywood actors that are paid considerably more than that. There are per, per picture. Yeah, so they're not even working seven days a week, five days a week. Well, that's what I said. He's making $78,000 a day. And make no mistake, Bob Iger is vastly overpaid. And he's, he's caused so many problems, he shouldn't be getting what he's getting. No. But he's but. under contract and he's expected to work every day and be on call and everything else. These actors go in and do like a gig and move on to the next gig and on to the next gig. It's not like they're like, you know, on call 365 days a year right, working right. most of those days, you know? Yeah, and you might work your ass off, you know, for a couple months or whatever. If you're on a show, you're going to, you know, obviously work harder, I think, than somebody that's on, you know, a movie or whatever. But putting it in perspective, Bob Iger, I can't believe it. I'm not really defending him. I'm just, I'm just putting numbers out there. He makes less money than Mr. Beast on mm -hmm. YouTube. He makes less money than, than many A-list celebrities. And this guy is running all of Disney. So, you know, so he you makes know running a, you know, multifaceted company compared to an actor on a project. How much do CEOs of tech companies make? How much does Mark Zuckerberg make? I'm not saying it's you know, okay. I'm just, say, I mean, I'm just it saying. It used to be know. that CEOs didn't make so much more than their employees. It's right, not so right. ridiculous anymore. I'm not saying that's right. I'm just saying, though, if you compare the amount of work, the pressure, the stress, the the amount of people that you're responsible for, and you have a contract, yes, yeah, $78,000 a day, uh, 365 days a year, and you're responsible for everything. Yeah. So, including the downfall of Disney, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> that's a whole other story. Um, yeah. So let's let's talk about this. Let's talk about this, and uh, you know, we'll give you an update on the strike here. So before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. You get woohoo if you do. Woo now we are not members of SAG after. Apparently App we could be. Apparently we could be. They're now, not going to want us now. <laughs> no. So there was a whole thing I, I didn't pull it up, but. Um, they had a, a Q and A on whether or not if you were a cosplayer, oh yes, you were yes. allowed to cosplay. If it was disrespectful to cosplay with the strike, if it was disrespectful, like that's what we're doing. Is it disrespectful to cosplay during the strike? But they're like, well, you might want to be careful because if you're an influencer and you ever want to join SAG AFTRA, mm, we might dig that tweet up and. Well, we're screwed. You were screwed. <laughs> I don't give a shit. I I will uh, whatever deals we have, we will negotiate those deals on our own. Mm -hmm. But let's let's talk about this uh, Hollywood reporter Fran Drescher on Bob Iger. He says we're well, unrealistic. That's a movie. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Visual images. Okay. Anyway, continue. <sighs> he says we're unrealistic when he's making seventy eight thousand dollars a day. Come to bed with nothing but Mickey gloves on. 
And but you have to do it in the nanny voice. I don't know. I can't do that. I anyway. No, look, I, I actually do like Fran Drescher. I do like her. I've, I've said I like that she stood times. up for things before. And yeah. I love how that everyone loves her when she's there, but for one thing, but then they're hating her for something else. But it's, it's hilarious to me. But anyway. Mr. Iga. <laughs> Put the Mickey gloves on. Okay. Um, that was bad. That was really bad. Don't do that See, again. she does. That's that's what happens when you don't hire professionals because of a strike. You get stuck with me. Anyway. Me, me doing friend. Come Wait, on. that sounds bad. Okay. In an interview with Senator Bernie Sanders, the SAG after president said of the Disney chief, he stuck his foot in it so bad that you notice none of the other CEOs are opening their mouths. That's true. They aren't because they're all coming after Bob Iger and they're happy to let that happen. But- the whole argument of $78,000 a day isn't really apples to apples. No, so. he, he said that uh, their demands were not realistic. We'll talk about that. And then we're going to go through the list of demands here and what they asked for and what the studios came back with. Um, he said that during the same thing where he said, hey, we might have a fire sale soon. Uh, Fran Drescher said he stuck his foot in it so bad you notice none of the other CEOs are even opening their mouths. Because they're true. like, they're kind of like, Ooh. Why did you have to? Let Bob fight it and you sit back and yeah. you look squeaky clean. Yeah, you're like, well, I didn't say anything. I, well, I, well, Bob. Bob. There he is sitting in his designer clothes. Yes, as a lot of celebrities. And just got on his private jet at the billionaire's camp telling us we're unrealistic when he's making 78 grand a day. How do you deal with someone like that who's so tone deaf? Are you an ignoramus? I don't understand. We need someone with character and courage to go to those boardrooms and say, listen, we're doing this all wrong. We want to, you're doing this all wrong. Yes, you're right. I think someone should go to the boardrooms. You're doing it all wrong because that's why you lost all this money. <laughs> you're going to need to fix it. And doing this isn't going to fix it. She says they're out of touch though, but didn't she get didn't she get busted on for hanging out with the Kardashians? All right, they said private jets. How many of these actors and stuff go on, on private jets for things? And then they're all wearing designer clothes. Have you seen the award shows? Do you know how much like, those dresses cost? Have you seen the gift bags for the celebrities for just for coming to the award? They're worth thousands of dollars. But yes, yes, it's Bob Iger who's out of touch. So I am not okay. a fashion. I am not a fashionista. But um, did she buy this at Walmart? I don't think she did. I, I'm just. I don't know what brand this is. So I don't know. Anyway, uh, <laughs> it's just. I, I just. I can feel if it hasn't happened already. There's a South Park episode incoming. I just. I just. I can't. There's a South I'm Park episode touch, incoming. And I need someone who's courage. And who, are you an ignoramus? Says the person going on about Bob Iger wearing designer clothes and the poor celebrities. Drescher also described the studio's negotiating committee as lacking empathy. I was looking at uh, even the people across the table in the room, and I'm thinking, who are you? She said one of the uh, AMP tip negotiators. Maybe he's a great family man. Maybe he makes donations. Maybe he supports the community, but his job is to screw me and my members. You got to be consistent in your life with how you treat other people. Um, Someone tell the celebrities this. So, this, is, this is the thing. They're probably not getting a lot of support from Joe Average and Jane Average because people already think celebrities are out of touch. Now, I do not believe that is always the case. I think there are some celebrities that are very down-to-earth people. But the perception lately has been us versus them. Mm -hmm. When you look at the Golden Globes and the drop-off in viewership and you look at the Academy Awards and the drop-off in viewership, People are looking at celebrities like you guys are completely out of touch. Now you're talking about Bob Iger being completely out of touch. You know, stories of celebrities being mad because someone spoke to them in a restaurant. Like if the waiter asks a question, you, you're told not to speak to me. And you hear these stories all the time about this kind of stuff. And they're like, but but everybody else, you know, we're the, we're the poor people. And look, I get it. A lot of actors who are in the guild, a lot of people who are in the guild are not the A-lister actors. And that is true. However... Not everyone who runs a company is Bob Iger, you know, in Hollywood either. So, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, there he's got his underlings and, you know, it's... it's I'm just saying, it's like, yeah, there's a lot of people who aren't A-listers. And, and but, well, it's funny. If you go out to the one that's Hollywood actor salary, so they have this thing out. and Not that one, the other one. They have this Hollywood actor salary, right? And they're saying that the average actor salary is $166,943 because the lowest is $31,691 and the highest is $861,330. But that's not really indicative of what the highest salaries are because if you go to the other article, Hollywood's top 25 top paid actors of 2022 and 2023 and you look at what they're getting paid, Tom Cruise, you know, at the top of $100 million for Maverick, but then Will Smith, $35 million. Leonardo DiCaprio, 30. This is for one, one project. 
Brad yes. Pitt, 30 million. One Dwayne movie. Johnson, Black Adam, 22.5 million. Will Ferrell, 20 million. Chris Hemsworth, 20 million. Vin Diesel, 20 million. It goes on and on. Even for Barbie, which looks like it's going to do really well, at least they did, they did, uh, they gave him the same amount of money, which is good. Ryan Gosling and Margot Robbie, 12.5 million. Even though if she's the main character, shouldn't she have got more money? Well, she's being progressive, and Barbie is making sure that Ken is on equal. Equal yeah, right. footing. But I'm just saying, there, there's people getting this all this money. Beverly Hills Cup for Eddie Murphy, 15 million. Aquaman, what did he get? Uh, 15 million. 15 million. And then, but then when you go out to the, uh, the the thing with the average salary, those aren't factored in. No. I mean, you want to talk about, you know, there being a discrepancy in pay between, you know, because you've got people that are like, you know, just kind of like working, working actors, then you've got your celebrities, right? But again, the average American is going to look at this and they're going to be like, $166,000. That's like and three, you're complaining. three or four times what I make. Fuck you guys. And they don't have to worry about that. And a lot of, yeah, I mean, not yeah. every, not, of course, not everyone. No, no, not everyone. A project, a project, and they aren't necessarily, like, they're they're doing this project, that project, that project. They're not, like, working, you know, necessarily regularly, you know, nine to five, like everybody else, as many hours, as many days. They might work some days longer, but you know what I'm saying? It, there's a, there's definitely a difference. This and is, people are going to look at that. They're not yeah. going to look at, you know, listen to what you're saying because they think you're full of shit. They're, so Disney is doling out more money for one celebrity per picture, which I'm not saying the celebrities don't deserve that. If they're bringing a billion dollars to the box office, they they should get paid, right? You should get a cut. If they're coming to see Johnny oh, Depp. that's their base. They usually get residuals too. Yeah, they get residuals. They get merchandise sales. They get, and how many movies over how many years that these actors have, have done uh, are they getting residuals for? You know, I mean, Tom Cruise is probably still getting paid for risky business, you know? Uh, so then you have to compound it. How many of these actors have side hustles? They have businesses they've invested in. You know, they might actually make more money off of businesses they've invested in than they do off of their, their movies. Mm -hmm. So you start looking at all of this and you're like, okay, in the grand scheme of things, actually Bob Iger running Disney that churns out or used to churn out billion dollar movies. It really isn't as much money. How much, how much money did Fran Drescher make on the nanny all those years? Oh, you I know? don't think it was Bob Iger level. Well, it wasn't <laughs> Bob Iger level, but I'm sure she was getting paid pretty well. It was a pretty popular well, show. Well, she must have money from it left over because she's not really doing anything else. Well, they pay her to be the be the president of the Senate. I don't know, probably. I, don't know she's getting paid. I mean, look, I'm not busted. I, I like Fran, Fran Drescher. I do. I, I do. But I I'm also like, the obvious. This, this argument doesn't hold a lot of water because there are so many actors that are paid more than Bob Iger. So to for one project. For one project. So to single Bob Iger out for his annual compensation when he's working a lot more hours, I guarantee you, is kind of weird. It's kind of a weird thing to do. They're not mentioning the Tom Cruises and the Will Smiths and the Brad Pitts. And they're like, hey, yeah, the working actors. It's like, yeah, those guys, a lot of times they do get screwed. I'll be honest, they do. Oh, yeah, the ones every day, you know, the background actors and stuff, yes. So what's... um. Let's look at what TV the TV actors don't make what you know no, film they actors don't. make. And stuff Not like unless that. you're on Friends. So or yeah, so TV like actors, I'm sure you know, make a lot less, but I'm sure it's still above what they, that chart. Yeah, yeah, and you know, you have to kind of take take um, some of these charts with a grain of salt because the one I saw a couple of weeks ago, uh, they're talking about video game journalists. They said the average salary for a video game journalist was like 150 grand a year or something. I'm like, what? On what planet is it? Unless you have some people reporting, like, well, I work in San Francisco for well, IGN, need, and I'm making. Why are all the gaming magazines shutting down? <laughs> I know, right? It's like when you're paying people 150 thousand dollars a year to actively burn your business down by chasing off your your readers. Yeah, I can't imagine. Can't imagine why they're not doing better. Um, so these these were the. Uh, this is the list of proposals and the studio's counter proposals. Rolling Stone actually had a pretty. Um, well, they did. They did a journalism. They did a journalism. Yeah, they did. But they actually did bring up that you know she was hobnobbing right before this. Uh, Fran was hobnobbing with Kim Kardashian and, uh, in her Walmart clothes because you know designer and clothes her, are bad. Her Walmart clothes. And Kardashians never ever wear designer clothes. They, they only don't. buy from Target. They don't. They're they're uh, slightly better than Walmart. Yeah, they're they're really sold to the earth people. The right, Kardashians. Right. So sag after us said an 11% general wage increase in year one to make up for record inflation, along with a 4% wage increase in year two and a 4% wage increase in year three. And we looked up, um, I don't have it. Oh, here we it go. It was like, the average is like eight or something. 8.7% is the average cost of living increase for 2023. That's high. Now, back in the day when I worked for 
other people, it was three to five percent. So that's what they're asking for. Yeah. And what they came back with was like uh Here we go. They said five percent. And you know th- th- I don't think that's I mean, they they can cop a little bit on their meat a little bit in the middle, but I don't I don't I don't, I don't think, I think that's a bad deal. That that's, that's actually that's about, about half of what they're asking for, and then they still get the the four percent and then they get three point five percent. Come to three. seven and meet in the middle or something. Meet in the middle. I mean? Sag after a cash share and revenue on high performing streaming shows. Uh, they rejected that. Well, they if it's a high performing streaming show, they probably should. But then here's the thing: where else do you get revenue? Like you usually get paid for your project. You don't usually get you know residuals afterwards. It that, I mean, in Hollywood they do, but I'm yeah. saying in the rest of the world for a lot of things other than like maybe books and stuff, you know, or different like games or things like that, they don't normally. But if it's a really high performing streaming show. I think it depends on the deal that individual actors and writers have with the studio. Their agent would work something out. Well, that's how it is in publishing. One person yeah. might get a really great residual deal. Another one might not, depending on how good their agent is. Just just talking about you know uh, graphic novel publishing, which we actually do know quite a bit about. Um, there are people going to the same publisher, let's just say Scholastic. And I've heard Scholastic advances can range from 5000 to 50,000 plus, it depends on who you are and what kind of an agent you have and how well they think the book is gonna do. In this case, if you went to them and said, hey, I'm this celebrity and this is gonna do well, I want, I will come on board Netflix maybe for less money up front, but you're gonna have to give me a cut of, you know, but then how you figure that out? And that's the big problem. Like nobody knows how to figure out this. Right, streaming that's the problem. It's because everybody be pays really for a, yeah, they pay for a subscription. And as I saw something the other day on this, and it was a guy, a Hollywood guy who said the, the biggest problem is, Back in the day, you could look at an individual piece of content and say, look, this we sold this many DVDs. We had this many ticket sales for a movie. You can't do that with streaming. Like somebody can say, hey, I subscribed to Netflix for Stranger Things or Orange is the New Black, and they know that there's value, but there's no way to really quantify that. Right, because you know? everybody, that everybody, every single show they watch, you might have subscribed for those shows, but then it's like, yeah. how do you split that $15 among hundreds of shows? Uh, they say acknowledge that performance capture should be covered by SAG after that's okay, that the AI stuff. Well, um, it would be any kind of like, uh, you know, CGI monster. If you're CGI monster number five and they put the, oh, the ping that. pong balls on you and you, that's yeah, covered by, cause you're technically acting. You I mean, technically are. So I can see that are. one. I think that's I, I fair. I think the, their AI concerns are fair. Yeah, SAG after establish a comprehensive set of provisions to protect human created work. Mm-hmm. I don't disagree. And require informed consent or fair compensation when AI is employed to make a digital replica of a performer. Uh, they said failed to address many vital concerns, leaving principal performers and background actors vulnerable to having most of their work replaced by digital replicas. What? I don't know, but I I don't disagree with them on the AI issue, and uh, I think that the the motion capture issue, performance capture, I I think that's fair. The the problem with AI, if you're a performer, is like they've they've done this. They've actually taken performers and they've changed lines and they've used uh, AI to replicate their voice, and then they've used CGI to make their mouth mesh up. And they they said they're going to use it for like foreign dubs and stuff, so the mouth actually matches the words. But it could be misused. It could be like, okay, this actor did not want to say this line. This actor did not want to swear or something. Maybe it's against their beliefs or whatever. And now they've got this actor out there, you know, uh, praising Hitler and dropping F-bombs and whatever Mm -hmm. because they could do it. But then you have to look at the contract you sign. Like, do you have final say over the final work? Yes or no? But if the studio wanted to vilify somebody... Yeah, they could. You no, know, I mean, they technically could. So yeah, they could. They could be and they like, could be like, well, you did. You know, it's not. It's not. You can't do anything about it because you know we, we're allowed to. We had the rights to do it. Yeah, they could. They could just be like, yeah, we're gonna make this guy a complete douchebag, or you know, if so and so didn't finish the movie, or so and so walked off set and they didn't want to do the scene. Well, it's fine. We'll just replace him with AI. What's eventually gonna happen is none of this is gonna matter. I hate to. I hate to be the bearer of bad news. Eventually, what is going to happen is they will just create whole cloth digital actors who are not going to complain and who don't have to get paid and who don't have families and who don't, you know, and they'll just be like, fine, we're just going to make movies that are completely fabricated in CG. And that's going to be it. That 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 is coming sooner rather than later. But I mean, the best you can do is basically just push it back. Yeah, I'm agree with you. I'm sorry. 
Oh, sorry. I was like, yeah, this look on your face. Like, wow, that's, that's kind of sad. No, I'm sorry. I was, I was, I was thinking of something. My mind's wandering. Okay. Had dental work today. So and my mouth hurts and I'm like, you know, still on, on pain meds. So I'm just like, Hey. Yeah. She, um, I did mention that in the other videos today that you're, you're kind of mad. I have up. more I, and I have more coming. I'm just it's getting okay. a bunch of stuff done, but they have to do it in stages. Anyway, continue. Yeah. It's going to be a long drawn out process. Like the strike. It. Like the strike. Yeah. Uh, so here's what they think the end game is. And we've said this before. Basically, they think they're going to try to break everybody and get them to agree to much less money because the threat of not working at all is... Well, I think that's exactly what they're trying to do. You know, and, but the, the flip side the flip side of that, to play devil's advocate here, is these studios can't afford... They really can't afford it. Everybody's like, they had record profits in 2020 and 2021. See, here's the thing. I think there's a lot of... They have a lot of valid points, Okay. The problem is, is well, for every valid point they have, they have ridiculous demands tied to that. And for like the writers, for example, you know, maybe they would agree to more of the things you want if you would agree to the fact that, well, if you have, you need five writers, you hire five writers. You don't yeah. hire 25 writers for no damn good reason other than they get to all stay employed. I think you have to meet in the middle um, on this one because you might get what you want or more of what you want, but understand that if there's not as much production being done, not as many of you are needed. And that, that sucks. That, I'm that's sorry. the truth. But that's how reality mm. is. If you work in a company and it downsizes, you know, because they decide they're switching something else or they have to sell off some of their, their factories or whatever because the economy's bad, you don't get to just say, well, I demand that I work anyway because I'm me. You no, know, sadly, you have to go find a job someplace else. That's just how it works. Yeah, I mean... Look, there there have been many factories here in the U.S. They're like, well, we can't really afford to keep all these union employees, those pesky union employees. So let's just pack her all up and move to Mexico. Let's move down south. We've had here in Pennsylvania. I know there are several manufacturers that moved down south because they knew they could get workers cheaper and that they probably weren't going to demand as much. As I said, if they were just willing to, like, you know, meet in the middle a little more, you know, some of the stuff stuff doesn't get, you know, shif- shipped out as much, but a lot of times it does because they're cheap asses, but you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. I mean, I mean, there is a way to, to meet in the middle on this. I don't think everything they're asking for is wrong. Actually, I think they have a lot of valid points. Um, I think, but then it's offset by the, the other demands that are like, okay, you're just being dumb now, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, I think they're, they're, they're trying to, greedy. I Come think on. they're trying to stop like all AI at all because they know AI is going to replace a, a lot of writers and a lot of actors in the future, but you can't, Stop it. So basically, you're going to have to get better conditions, I think, for the people that are left. But this is just the, the way every industry is going now. And I'm sorry. I, I really am. I mean, it's even grocery stores. You've got one clerk overseeing like 10 or 12 self-checkout stations. Mm-hmm. And that's like 10 or 12 jobs that would have been right, human right. jobs. And I mean, I'm not you know? saying – and, you know, and that's, that's – you can argue that's much worse – because there's people that are just, you know, hand to mouthing it. Yeah. You know, and then you have, well, Kevin Bacon and Kira Sed- Sedgwick came down from on, on high in Manhattan to protest. You mean, oh, well, you, know, I mean, you came out of your penthouse to. They came to, out of the penthouse to protest. I'm this. like, I, yeah. I mean, it's just, it's just, it's just ridiculous. <sighs> All right. So we're going to wrap this up. Yes. I think we need to wrap this up. I, I don't think it's going to end anytime soon. I think the studios actually have the the higher ground at this point because you know, they're where, where are you going to go? What are you going to do? I mean, I do you feel know? bad for the actors that are like the, the lower on a totem pole actors, but I'm just like, you know, you're, you're not usually on salary. I mean, some places you might get to be lucky that you are working at a job and you're on salary at that job. Like there are places that you work year round in a theater or something like that. And that's one thing, but most jobs, it's mostly day to day. Yeah. You know, I'm sorry. Or like, you know, project to project. It's, yeah. I don't it, want it to is. tell you it's, I mean, and it's not just actors. And I think that's where they're going to lose sympathy from people because there are so many other people in so many other industries as everything kind of transitions to gig work that are in the same situation but making a lot less money mm-hmm. on average and their futures are a lot less secure. I mean, ask the Uber driver, you know, how things are going. Ask, you know, um, people that are resorting to, you know, selling themselves online or whatever, how things are going, you know, it's, it's like, 
you know, then they're going to look at these actors and be like, oh, OK, so you, you know, you guys have a pretty good compared to us. So, yeah, as they're wearing their designer clothes, you know, designer right, shoes right. and I'll hit in the streets and they'll, right. they'll smile at the fans and act like they like them then and they'll stop them when they get what they want, like two months later, you know? Yeah. So this is this is a, like I said, this is a, a South Park episode incoming. If, it, if I guarantee you they're already working on it, if they haven't dropped it already they're gonna be like yep this they is probably just, already have something like it already i'm i'm sure they do because this has happened Everything, before. They, they, it's all gets predicted on south park and <laughs> simpsons and stuff and then it happens all right we're gonna wrap it up yes please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants guys we'll talk later bye help support the channel go to the reef dot support and get early access to podcasts videos and other content that's the reef dot support